Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Lakeland Vale Let's Play series with me, See Waddy here in Farming Simulator 19. Just collecting up some of the bales from the um, recent harvest on Field 16 that I did in the last episode. Um, been having a look at the prices for the bales. Uh, right now the best price for them is at the, um, well, in the regular game, the farm barn sales. Or, if you're using the mods, like I am, the best place to sell the bales currently is at the global market. Um, difference in price is that the bales at um, farm barn sales are $100. Or the straw is a hundred dollars per one thousand liters. Or if I take it up to the um, global market, the um, the bales are worth one hundred and thirty-three dollars per one thousand liters. So I'm going to take a couple up there, take a full trailer load quickly, get those sold because obviously Dolores needs some money. Um, and then we're going to head uh, to go pick up the rest of the bales, take those, and we're going to put those. Not into storage as such, because I don't really have any more storage <laughs> capacity for bales, but I'm going to unload them near the um, near the cow pen, because we can use them obviously for the straw blower and for also making TMR to feed the cows, which is something we're going to do later on. Uh, so far as yet, I have not been able to do anything with the, um, with the field next to me, the potato field does need to be lime spread it does need to be um, subsoiled or ploughed so that's something I'm gonna have to get on with but right now um, there's slightly more pressing engagements more more things that I need to do a little bit more urgently like making a bit of money <laughs> uh, to round out the day I also need to repair a lot of equipment there's quite a few tr the, tr the tractors some other bits and pieces and stuff need to be um, repaired. So Dolores is probably going to have to spend part of the day. Thunder! And I can't remember why I put thunder in. Oh, because I'm going to need to get the service trailer and the spanners out. I'm very sorry. Um, I couldn't remember because... Okay, let's break the fourth wall for a minute. I'm recording this commentary in post. Yes, I'm recording this commentary after the fact that I recorded the video and recorded the gameplay because, once again, I've suffered from that very annoying issue whereby I did some Windows updates on my PC, I restarted my PC, didn't bother, or I should say, didn't even think to look at my settings, jumped into game, recorded this video and the next couple of videos and it was only later in the day when I decided to do a, my multiplayer live stream that I realized my microphone was not working in Windows. Windows update had disabled and broken my microphone yet again as it always does. So unfortunately I've recorded this episode and I think the next one without any commentary so I've got to record the commentary now in the edit in Sony Vegas and um, if there's any differences in audio volume or audio quality compared to the normal videos that'll be the reason why but yes the reason why I got a thunder on the video was because um yeah Dolores is going to get the service trailer out and we're going to go around we're going to service quite a fair bit of our um, machinery and equipment Get, get it all repaired I also noticed um, having just sold those bales that the price for the bales at the global market went down between me looking and realizing oh the bales are worth 133 dot bucks here going back to the tractor driving all the way up the map to the global market building delivering my bales the price went down quite a lot <laughs> so actually I didn't make much more from those bale sales than had I sold them at the um, barn the barn at the farm 
And if I'd sold them at the barn at the farm, I would have saved fuel on the tractor. <laughs> so, um, it's a good job I'm not selling the next load then. I'm just picking those up and taking them to the farm. And I know people don't normally worry about things like that, but honestly, you know, sometimes some of the sell points, um, by the time you've driven there, if you actually think about it, you've probably not actually made as much money as you thought when you factor in the wear on wear and tear on the machine that's had to drive there, as well as the fuel that you've used. It's probably not too bad on this map, but I know, for example, on Fenton Forest, on the multiplayer map, those, a lot of those sales points are quite a long, long way away from where your farm is, definitely, and from where some of the fields are. So it becomes more critical to pick and choose your sell points more wisely. It does. Um, but anyway, we'll get these picked up. I probably have enough capacity to get all of these in one trailer load. Um, which means I shouldn't have to come back and revisit this field. The harvester's still here, by the way, because, quite frankly, I can't be bothered to move it yet. Because I believe I'm going to be harvesting these, the two fields next to me, fields one and fields four, um, fairly soon. So I might as well just leave the harvester here. <laughs> Rather than drive it all the way back to the farm, just to drive it all the way back again in a couple of days. I know it's lazy of me, but hey. Hey! Hey, hey, look, hey, because it's a hay bale. Oh, yeah, I won't make jokes like that anymore, promise. Anyway, get the bales delivered to the farm. Like I say, put them next to the cow storage because we can always use them in the straw blower. We're going to be mixing them in with the TMR and stuff as well, which is kind of cool. Um... And we'll see where it really goes from there. Um, I've got repairing to do. In the equipment re um, stored back to full working order. Obviously, that's going to be kind of expensive. I need to um, sell some stuff. Possibly, maybe. But we'll see how that goes. Hope we're going to get to harvest some of our other crops fairly soon, like our corn and stuff. That's going to be pretty nice. Get that in. I'm hoping I'm going to be in a position soon where I can start doing pigs as well. You know. few bits of machinery that are going to need to be repaired today. As I say, the tractors will need to be. Um, the... Um, I think the baler needs to be repaired. What else? The potato harvester definitely needs to be repaired. That thing got absolutely wrecked doing the harvest the other day in field 20. That's actually going to be probably the most expensive thing to repair. Um, what else? Um, our, our sprayer needs a repair, I believe. Uh, there's a couple of bits of equipment I've just got to go around and do a bit of service work on. Leave that part there. 
with the um, straw and everything on it. Like I say, we'll head off now and um, I'm just going to drag the service trailer out of the shed and park it in the, the open area over here on the left and then I can basically bring all my other machines and equipment to it makes a bit more sense thunder thunder love thunder I was watching the recent millennial farmer video last night actually and he actually got to say it as he was actually in a field having a storm there was a storm it was raining there was even i think some thunder sound in the background and he got to say it i thought well, that was quite appropriate but anyway dolores activates the service trailer we might as well repair this while we're here anyway it's going to need some fuel as well Also, something that's a bit weird is every time I tab or tried to tab, the vehicle kept getting cheaper and cheaper. The value of the machine keeps going down. <laughs> uh, so that's a weird one. I was losing a dollar every time I hit the tab button. So, we'll, well, to be fair, I probably need to go give this a wash first. I'll also make sure I drive through the barn to get rid of that tagging cone. <laughs> yeah. The only reason why I tagged the farm barn sales point was because there's two of them on the map and I didn't know which one had the best price. One was, like I say, one was char offering $100 for straw. The other one was offering about 86 I was like, I need to make sure I select the right one. But then I went and checked the global market mod and was like, ah, the global market, $133. That's even better. However, by the time I'd actually driven there, the price crashed. <laughs> so, um, didn't make as much money from the straw sales as I probably wanted to. But anyway, we'll get this cleaned and then we'll take it and give it a repair. We'll also give it a refuel. See, not not every day is you know far, farmer's life isn't all all that all glamorous you know it's not just driving up ground fields in tractors and stuff some days you have to do some actual work <laughs> and that means repairing machines and getting your hands dirty whoa almost tipping machines over him in the shed right next task will be the case puma i think i'm just gonna have a quick run through the equipment though see what does need to be repaired sprayer the baler load of forks 
Well, as the baler is parked here and the tractor is here, might as well take it. One thing I do like about the field service trailer, the fact you can you can basically repair your vehicles anywhere. You're not kind of um, restricted like you are with a normal workshop, placeable. Where you have to keep going to, the, you have to take every, you can, you know, you can take basically the workshop to the vehicle. If you're in the middle of a field and you need a repair, you can do it, you know? Like in multiplayer the other evening or over the last two days when we've been doing a potato harvesting contract that has literally taken us two whole days in real life and in game to complete. The field service trailer was an absolute star because it enabled us to keep their harvesters repaired in the field to keep them harvesting at their maximum speed. If we had to drive the harvesters back to the farm, every time the headers started to get worn out, it would have taken that, made that job even longer because the field was not close to the farm. Where we was doing the contract was not close to the farm at all, you know? And the machines don't travel that fast. At least with the service trailer, we was able to leave the the machines in the field in the rows that they were harvesting on and just give them a tune up and a fix and let them carry on without having to disturb them okay i'm also going to take this opportunity to empty out my um fertilizer spray um, to make sure this tank is empty because we may need herbicide in this before we need fertilizer It depends. It's always best to leave your sprayer empty, I think. It also needs a bit of a wash, so I'll go and power wash that. I think our potato washer steamer is also working quite nicely. I tell you what, it's got to go through a serious amount of potatoes, though. Got to go through some potatoes. There's a lot of potatoes that need to be washed need to be steamed the washer can't doesn't only holds 180,000 liters and i think the steamer holds even less than that so unfortunately it's going to be sort of drip feeding both machines over the next couple of videos to get all the potatoes put through But hey, this is probably not a bad way to end today before we start on new tasks tomorrow. Get all the machine equipment repaired today. Decide what we're going to do. thinking that the fields down at the bottom of the map that I've um, composted I think I'm just going to go and seed those with um, yeah fields 13 and 14 because they don't actually need ploughing um, I'm going to go and seed those with oil seed radish I'm going to go put a cover crop on those fields and that way then when I cultivate or subsoil which I'll do as well I can do fields 12 and 15 at the same time. Fields 13 or 14 will be at maximum fertilization. They will. So I'm going to grab them case maxim. I'm going to quickly go and move some potatoes around and <laughs> just quickly shuffle some potatoes uh, 
from move some potatoes from the washer into the steamer. I'm wondering if I could do this maybe a bit better later on if I had the um the fill the fill trigger conveyor belt. Whether I could put the fill trigger conveyor belt into underneath the the washer pipe and have the the other bit going straight into the steamer input. Possibly, maybe. So I don't have to keep shunting the trailer backwards and forwards. The only problem is then I'd end up with a conveyor belt running right across that shed, which would make it very difficult for me to drive through that shed with machines. Um, if there's a conveyor belt stretching all the way across the room. Everything looking. 37,000. Uh, we're not in a position to sell any steamed potatoes yet then. We'll probably be doing that tomorrow. They probably The machine needs to probably run through the night, I think. To give us a trailer full of potatoes that we can go and sell. No, we'll go do some cover crop seeding instead. We'll take the Amazoni because it only requires seed, it doesn't require fertilizer. Would seem a bit silly to me to use a machine that applies fertilizer to plant a crop that is going to give you fertilizer. Because <laughs> um, the oilseed radish does not require fertilizer to grow. So why waste fertilizer when you're planting it? I watch so many people, so many videos, so many streams where people do that, where they're using a, you know, fertilizer equipped seeder or planter to put oilseed radish in the ground and I'm just like what are you doing you're wasting money you're wasting fertilizer <laughs> the whole pu purpose of doing the oilseed radish is so you don't have to use fertilizer you don't have to buy it and have the expense because obviously oilseed radish is actually very, very cheap. It uses very little seed to plant it. And you're getting fertilizer. You're getting a fertilizer state when you cultivate it into the ground. And for all those people that obviously worry about, you know, organic farming, again, no chemicals in oilseed radish, no pesticides. You can plant that, cultivate it, put your crop on the top, and um, hey presto. You've got nicely f organically fertilised product growing on your field. actually quite a nice seed of this it's not one i've used terribly massively in game um i think i used it way back on my very first ever let's play series on a stancia lapacho i think i had this seeder on that map but i've ended up kind of moving away from it and using obviously other bodied seeders and stuff over the um, other series but now with the optional fertilization feature built into some of these original machines um, it's given me a chance to go back and play with some of these original in-game seeders and like I say the Amazon is pretty nice I mean, obviously, you could go up to Seed Hawk or the Terminator thing, but I don't think I particularly need that at 
this junction in time. Plus, honestly, if I was going to go for a big, big cedar or planter at a later stage in game, I'll probably end up going switching over to the, the John Deere DB stuff. Either the DB90 or the DB120. Because that would definitely be a upgrade. That would definitely get some work done. There's also that um, Estella thing. Estella, Cedar, Planter. That I've got installed. That's about 27 metres width. That could be quite nice to use. The trouble is that they require such powerful machines to pull them. A lot of horsepower to pull those planters and cedars. So I'd have to have some sub upgrades to the um, the Magnum here. We'd have to have something above the Magnum, either some quad tracks, maybe. So I'm just going to get these two fields done and that kind of sees me through the rest of today and then obviously tomorrow in game once Dolores has had a good night's sleep we will be um, tackling some other other jobs possibly field 20 I would think starting on the whole lime spreading subsoiling Cultivating rigmarole type dealy that's required on that. Get that field ready to replant. <laughs> I probably, I'll be honest, I'm probably not going to put oil seed radish on field 20. <laughs> I think we'll do that the old fashioned way, whereby I chuck a load of compost on it, I then when I seed, I'll use my seeder with fertilizer. Will I? What is the plan for field 20? It's a big field. Probably going to be doing corn and soybeans on that. Which means we're going to have to use the planter. And the planter doesn't put fertilizer. Ooh, that's giving me some headaches now to think about. Because then I would have to spray after seeding get the second fertilizer state. I'd have to put get the sprayer out. Well, that's a possibility, I suppose. But anyway, we'll, we'll have a bit of a go at this. Like I say, I was thinking about taking a screenshot then for the thumbnail, but I think I'll probably wait till I start doing the next field. Because <laughs> people will be like, dude, why are you seeding mostly on, not on the field? Tree there, that just is a little bit awkwardly in the way. I haven't done any tree chopping yet in this series. I haven't chopped down any trees to try and make... Because I haven't really needed to make access to anything easier. But, you know, there might be scope in the future to take down a tree or two. I also probably need to make sure that when I start seeding this field, I actually seed the field and don't miss the edge. Um, let's overlap just a little bit. Just a little bit. And then we'll get the thumbnail screenshot picture taken there we go Dolores seeding her cover crop and I tell you what at that point we're probably very close to the end of the episode folks so 
If you'd be so kind as to click that like button for me, if you'll make sure you are subscribed to the channel, if you'll leave, want to leave your questions, comments, suggestions or feedback, do so in the comment section below the video. And please remember to share the video wherever you see fit, with whomever you see fit. This has been the Lakeland Vale map by Stevie. I've been C. Waddy. Our farmer is obviously Dolores Flufflebotham. I'll look forward to seeing you all again in the next video. But for now, from me, it's goodbye.